Hello students, here is your another video for your subject commerce for your online class. And I'd like to welcome each one watching and attending class 11th commerce. Well students, we have already begun with unit 1 and before we go further, let us look into the flashback of unit 1 titled Classification of Human Activities. We had learned meaning of human activities. I think by now you must have understood that not only going to work and earning money, but all the activities that we do from morning till evening from the time we get up from the bed, wash up, eat, play, watch television, visit religious places, do exercise, do work at home. So all the activities, not only earning money, but all the activities that the human does for satisfying their wants is called as human activity. Then we looked into the classification of human activities. The human activities are classified into two, economic and non-economic. And then we dealt with the economic activities, meaning and characteristics. So any activity which is undertaken with the purpose to earn money and acquire wealth is called economic activities. And then we looked into few of its characteristics, which you can refer to my previous video. Go there, watch and learn. Now let us begin with non-economic activities. The activities which are undertaken to satisfy social, religious, cultural and sentimental requirements example mother cares for children, going to temple, mosque or church. So any activity that is undertaken for our sentimental, emotional, religious requirements, these activities are called as non-economic activities. The object of this is not monetary gain or reward. So when we do this activity, we don't expect any money or any reward in return because this is just out of our emotions and sentiments. These are for reasons of love, sympathy, religion and patriotism. So a mother caring for children is out of love, attending, visiting temple, church or mosque is out of the religious requirements love for the country patriotism is within you because you have love for the country the same activity can be economic as well as non-economic example nurse attending a patient in a hospital is an economic activity as she works for salary but the same nurse attending her sick mother at home is a non-economic activity. Now, in both the cases, the activity is caring. But where is the dividing line? The dividing line is not the activity, but the objective for which it is undertaken. So in the first part of the example, we see that she cares for a patient in the hospital and in return, she gets salary which is an economic activity because this is done with the motive to earn income. Whereas when she goes home, she cares for her sick mother, she is not expecting any monetary in return. This is out of care and love for her mother. So here even though in both cases the work is caring, but the dividing line is the objective for which it is undertaken. Now let us look into the distinction or difference between the economic activities and non-economic activities. Economic activity is taken with the objective to earn living and acquire wealth, to earn money and gather wealth, whereas non-economic activity is to obtain personal satisfaction and sentiment. We expect money income in return for economic activity. We do not expect any money return for non-economic activity. The 
economic activity is directly related to income and wealth whereas non economic activity is not related to income and wealth we can measure economic activities in terms of money like production and selling of goods so we can measure like going to work and getting salary so we can measure the economic activities in terms of money but the non economic activities cannot be measured in terms of money the care affection love that your parents grandparents they show towards you your relatives they show towards you it cannot be measured in terms of money but the person who measures the love and care of the parents and grandparents they have to better change their mind because these emotions cannot be measured in terms of money the logic of economic activity is guided by rational consideration now since you are doing this activity to earn money you will be very rational or you will be very particular in thinking what is right and wrong like the producers they will think properly that how to use the materials and other things and make something and earn profit out of it whereas the non economic activities are guided by the sentiments and emotions you don't have to be very thoughtful about what is right because it comes out of sentiments and emotions the resources in economic activities have to be properly allocated and there has to be optimum use of resources like how we said the economic activity motive is to earn money so the producer they have to properly use the raw material the fuel the labor that they put the workers that they employ into the production of goods they have to be properly used so that there will be maximum output and they will be able to earn more whereas in non economic activity there is no requirement of such optimum allocation the types or examples of economic activity is business profession etc and the social and religious activities are the example of non economic activities let us now look into the types of economic activities but students don't get confused we are following the book and so we learned about human activities then two classification economic activities meaning characteristics then we learned the non economic activities now we are back again to the types of economic activities we are back to the economic activities economic activities are classified into three types business profession and employment well i had told you that even though business profession and employment is done to earn money but it differs we will look into this as we go through the video so keep watching the video business it includes all those activities which are concerned with production and exchange of goods or services with the object of earning profit so business is the activity with the object of earning profit and this is production distribution and exchange of goods and services it is an economic activity because it is undertaken with the purpose to earn money income so we call business as an economic activity because the work of production exchange and of goods and service distribution of goods and service is done with the purpose to earn profit or income and therefore we call it as an economic activity all firms which carry on business activities are called business enterprises or business firms so all the firms which carry on the economic activity of earning money business activity they are called as business enterprise or business firm so it is not only the production of goods but the service sectors like insurance banking warehousing also comes under the business enterprise or business firms
business creates various types of utilities now students those who are new to this word utility it means something which has got a one satisfying power now if you're hungry and i give you a handful of sand or a brick i know you'll be very furious and you're going to throw the brick on me right because the brick will not give you satisfaction from your hunger what i have to give you i have to give you a slice of bread or a slice of pizza or bowl of rice so in the business they create the one satisfying power by by creating utilities now let us see the different types of utility form utility changing wood into table so here the wood which was lying in the corner which did not had any kind of utility or satisfying power now it's been changed in th into the table and the customer now is satisfied because now they can have a table because of the form utility place utility transporting goods from one place to another now students the goods are not available everywhere each and every goods so those goods are not available in certain places the goods are imported from other states or from outside and made it available for the customer to get satisfied like different types of fruits clothing materials or any kind of materials which are not available in the place is been transported and because of the change in the place the utility is created service utility performing direct services that is tailor dry cleaner etc even the direct service which which has been performed comes under the utility you get a one satisfaction satisfaction because of the service of tailor hairdresser parlor dry cleaner etc time utility availing stock of goods in off season that is warehouses now students we get some things all year round even though the cultivation is not done the whole year like rice pulses potatoes dals so because these things are been stocked in the warehouse and go down and ifcs they are been able to be supplied and made available to the people and satisfy wants so these are the various types of utility that the business creates profession the term means an occupation which involves application of specialized knowledge and skills to earn living so occupation which involves specialized knowledge and skill is termed as profession the persons who are engaged in profession are called professionals they render specialized services based on educational professional education training and experience so the person who gives specialized service called as professionals they give special service depending on their education training and experience like we have chartered accountants medicine and law so depending on their training and education of accountancy the chartered accountant will give you the service of maintaining accounts and checking accounts of your company according to the training of medicine the doctor and the nurses will treat you and according to the education and experience of law the lawyer will help you in any kind of suit or case now let us look into the main features of profession specialized body of knowledge every profession has a specialized and systematic body of knowledge so here like how we said that profession is an occupation where specialized knowledge and skill is required so every profession has got their systematic body of knowledge like for doctors the knowledge of medicine like for chartered accountants knowledge of accountancy and so each and every profession has got a systematic body of knowledge 
restricted entry allowed to only those who have completed the prescribed education and have passed the specified examination now the entry to the profession is restricted only those who have completed the prescribed education like doctors they have completed their mbbs nurses they have completed the general or bsc nursing teachers they have completed their b ed engineers they have completed the engineering education chartered accountants they have completed their the chartered accountancy the icwa and so these prescribed education only when they complete it or have passed a specified examination then only they are allowed to enter into the profession formal education and training a profession provides facilities for formal education and training to those who want to acquire professional qualification so each and every profession has got the facility given for formal education they have got the universities and colleges where these degrees are been provided mbbs llb ca bed and the education and training is given to those who want to have these professional qualifications professional associations every profession has its own association a professional association is a statutory body and its membership is essential it grants certificate of practice so every professional has got their own association like we have got doctors and nurses they come under the medical council of india lawyers they come under the bar council of india accountant chartered accountants they come under the institute of chartered accounts of india and engineers they come under the institute of engineers india and so each body of profession they have got the separate associations and from there they are granted the certificate of practice service motive they are expected to emphasize service to their client rather than economic gain so even though in the profession you have to charge fees and and ask money for your service or what you're doing for them but the motive more should be to provide service rather than economic gain code of conduct the activities of a professional are regulated by a formal code of conduct so each and every association each and every department of profession they have got their own ethics principles and code of conduct the medicine department the law department the accountancy department so they have to be very trustworthy and faithful regarding their work now let us look into the employment it means an economic activity where people work for others in exchange for some remuneration so here remuneration means salary or wages so here when a person works for other in exchange for salary or wages what we call as remuneration is called as employment it is an economic activity because the motive is to earn money the person who works for others are called employees the person or organization which engage others to work for them are called employers so the person who is working for others are called employee and the one who puts them to work are called employers the work performed is as per terms and conditions of the employment so depending on where you are working there is terms and conditions of employment there is an oral or written agreement between employer and employee so when the person comes to work they always have a verbal or oral or written agreement with the employer of the time till when they are supposed to work what salary they will get and what are the other facilities that they will receive
main features of employment a person works for others called employer so when you work for other that other person is called as employer an employee provides personal service there is a service agreement or contract between the employer and employee like what we had said earlier that there has to be a oral or a written agreement the employee has to obey the order of the employer so here the employer or the boss gives order and the employee or the worker has to follow no capital investment is made by the employee so this is not a business only the worker or the employee is working for the employer so they don't have to bring any money or any money to start the business capital means the amount invested to start the business the employee gets wages or salaries what we call as remuneration example teacher teaching in school accountant working in company this is this is the example of employment working for others for wages or salary what we call as remuneration now let us look into the distinction between business profession and employment even though these three comes under the economic activity but still it differs to some points the objective of business is to earn profit whereas the objective of profession is to give service for economic gain and employment to earn wages and salaries there is no need for any qualification for business anybody even with no qualification can set up a business in profession you need to have some minimum educational qualification in employment it depends on the type of job that you take in business production sale and exchange of goods and service comes under the nature of work profession they provide specialized service employment the work assigned by the employer the status in the business is the businessman is his her own master in profession they have to follow the guidelines prescribed by the professional associations in employment the employee cannot be their own master they have to follow the instructions of the employer the business reward is profit profession is professional fees and employment is wages or salary there is high risk in business because business do not have any certainty the risk in the profession can be negligible if you feel that from somewhere you're not getting that much fees you cannot you can just reject it in employment there is no risk because employee they don't have to think about what ups and downs is coming in the business only they have to think about their own salary and wages and if they get less or if they don't get enough they can leave the job and they can get up they can they can go to any other job where so there is no risk for them in business investment of capital is required adequate amount of capital is required to start up the business in profession limited amount is required just to set up a office in employment there is no requirement for any capital advertisement is necessary in business whereas in profession advertisement is prohibited and in employment it is not required the efficiency of business is measured with the profit profitability of the business in profession we measure it with the quality of service that is given and in employment we measure by productivity and quality of work the business is governed by the business law the profession is governed by the guidelines of profession and employment is governed by the terms and conditions of employment the ownership in business can be transferred you, you can transfer the ownership of your company to your heir or to anybody who want to transfer 
the profession is not possible you cannot transfer the certificate that you earned of becoming a doctor or a chartered accountant to anybody it is yours and even in employment you cannot transfer you cannot say that i have joined the work so in a week two days i will work two days somebody else will work two days somebody else will work and i will get the whole payment no you cannot transfer your work to others even in employment i hope student you had a good time in this online class and you must have learned about different classifications of human activities and its characteristics meaning and keep watching the videos keep yourself updated with every video coming up in your in your uh, site and thank you for watching